technical difficulties, we um, went ahead and canceled the Zoom session because the screen was freezing. So um, this is now just a recorded version of what the live Zoom call was going to be for everyone. Um, so we're going to jump right into it. I'm going to go ahead, start out on my back. We had already begun a bit of a warm up. For those of you who were in the live Zoom session, we had focused on finding our breath, breathing intentionally, which is what we're doing once again right now. Inhaling and exhaling. Focusing our bodies and our minds on the here and the now. Being at peace even with distractions and circumstances. Let's once again re-enter those warm-up poses. If you're watching this as a recording, we begin by bringing our knee to our chest. Single knee to chest stretch, beautiful inhale and exhale here. And we're going to add to the stretch by lengthening through the hamstrings, inhaling and exhaling, slowly pulling that leg towards our chest. And then let's combine those two movements. Let's inhale, knee to chest stretch. Exhale, lengthen. Inhale, knee to chest stretch. Exhale, lengthen. One final time. Inhale, knee to chest stretch. Exhale, lengthen. Good work, guys. Beautiful. Let's do same thing opposite side. Placing right foot down, bringing our left knee into our chest. Inhaling and exhaling here. And then lengthening. Inhale. Exhaling, deepening that stretch. And then let's combine the two. Inhale and exhale. Inhale, exhale. Inhale one final time and exhale. Good work, guys. Beautiful. From here, we were planting our feet, bringing our heels nice and close to our hips, tightening our abdominals, lifting our hips nice and high into a bridge pose. Holding in this elevated bridge pose for three to five breaths. This is wonderful for strengthening those outer, uh, smaller hip muscles. Feeling that lift all the way up, pulling our shoulder blades together, slowly exhaling, releasing down. Now we're going to add to our bridge here, okay? And to do that, we're going to do some rotational movement. So as I inhale and lift into my bridge once again, I'm going to take my left hand, I'm going to reach up, and then I'm going to just kind of reach across my body. Good, back to center, right hand goes up and across. And back, lower those hips, we'll do it again. Inhale up, left hand raises, exhale, reach across. Inhale back, right hand raises. Exhale, reach across. Good. 
Just getting some movement through that side body as we hold that bridge. Let's reach our hands overhead. Beautiful good morning stretch. We can even lengthen those legs out. I'm going to let my feet be slightly wider than my mat. On my exhale, I'm going to reach up and through my legs. And a nice, just real dynamic kind of motion, very organic, meaning it feels comfortable for our bodies and for our breaths. I'm going to once again return to my back using control by holding those abdominals tight as I unroll. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, reach forward, reaching through those feet. Inhale, return. Exhale, lay back. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, reach forward. Inhale, reach back. Exhale, relax. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, reach forward. This is our last time. Inhale, slowly release. Exhale, relax back. Beautiful job. Let's bring those knees back to center. Earlier in our warm-up, when we were in Zoom, we did a nice double knee to chest stretch into Happy Baby. Let's repeat that again for those just watching this recording. It'll be our first time here. And then if you'd like to add kind of a straddle stretch where we push those feet into the hands, lengthen through the legs, deepening that stretch, you can. If that is uncomfortable and not a, like part of your practice or doesn't feel like something that um, is achievable for you, you're more than welcome to release and just hold that happy baby. Even if happy baby does not feel super accessible, reaching for those hands, happy baby can also be done comfortably with our hands on our calves or on our shins, where we can still get that benefit of kind of pulling those legs towards those knees. So keep all of those modifications in mind as we move forward. Let's plant those knees back to the mat where we began our class. We're gonna rotate to our side, push ourselves all the way up. Wonderful job, guys. Oh, I'm gonna take an easy seated pose, even though I know for many this may not be super comfortable. Just to reiterate modification options, you can see I have my blocks here, okay? If easy seat is not comfortable, Please, by all means, plant a block under your hips. That's going to give more room for those knees to kind of unfold and open. You can, it will also take less pressure off of the ankles. Now, you'll see I separated my feet away from my body just a bit. If you're not using your block or you don't want to have to uh, uh, adjust using a prop regularly, you can also set those feet out in front of you a bit as well. Okay, let's go ahead, sit here briefly. Beautiful inhale and exhale, maybe close our eyes. I'm gonna get to my comfortable position. Let's go ahead, drop chin to chest. As we exhale, beautiful cat style stretch. Inhale, lift those shoulders, chest and heart center, head looking up. Good. Repeat. Inhale, cat spine. Exhale, cow spine. Wonderful. Bringing those head, that head and neck back to a nice neutral position, getting our feet underneath us. Let's come to forward fold. Maybe walk that forward fold out just a bit. And I'm facing you for the video. I'm going to adjust to face the front of my mat. Good. Let's go ahead and move through our sun A's. Once again, this is a, a refresher course on our sun A's. We're going to inhale, flat back. Exhale, hands to the mat, stepping or hopping back. Good. From the tie plank. We can release knees to the mat, lower belly all the way down. Let's lift to a gentle cobra since it's our first 
flow here, releasing all the way down, toes back underneath us, pushing up into downward facing dog. First time in downward facing dog today, we can walk that one out as well. Good, eyes looking up to the hands. I'm gonna step, walk, or hop my way up to the mat. Bending at those knees. Nice big steps forward. Forward fold. And from here we can root to rise into our extended Tadasana, our mountain pose. Hands coming to heart center and then traditional Tadasana. This week we focused uh, on working to label our asanas. So as a reminder, just that standard hands open and out on our side is traditional mountain pose. When we reach up, deep breath in, we take our extended mountain pose. Flowing forward into a standing forward fold. Inhale, nice flat back. Exhale, finding our high plank position. Releasing down towards the mat, lifting up, keeping our legs off the mat into our upward facing dog. Exhaling into our down dog or downward facing dog. Beautiful work. Eyes looking up, step walker, hop forward. Forward fold. Beautiful work. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, forward fold one final time here before we root to rise, reaching up for that extended Tadasana mountain pose. Exhaling, traditional Tadasana. Wonderful work. So we're gonna begin our standing series. I'm gonna step back with my right foot, keeping my hips square and facing forward. Line connecting that front foot to my back foot so I can lift my hands up into my warrior one, holding here. Warrior one will open those hips. Warrior two. Again, something we have practiced and familiar with. We're slowly working on that strength in that leg. I do want us to work on deepening our warrior two. So from wherever we're at, most people generally could shift forward slightly, lowering those hips and lengthening that back leg out. So you can see I went from my warrior two being here to a nice long extended warrior two. Good. And then even from there, you get a nice longer extended warrior one. Good. Let's bring our hands to heart center. Step forward. Beautiful deep breath in. Extended Tadasana. Exhale, mountain pose. Let's step back with the left foot. Warrior one. Holding here. One more inhale, and then we'll transition warrior two. Let's deepen that warrior two. And then see how it deepens our warrior one. Good work. Hands coming to heart center, stepping forward. Deep breath in, extended Tadasana. Maybe let those eyes follow those hands. Exhale, traditional Tadasana. Moving back, warrior one, stepping back. Inhale up, let's exhale, warrior two. Good work. We're gonna lengthen our legs out by inhaling, hands come together, legs become straight, and then exhale, we deepen that warrior two. Inhale up, exhale down. Inhale up, exhale down. One more time, inhale up, exhale down, good. So now we're gonna change our flow, inhaling up, keeping those legs straight, letting the hands once again extend, revisiting our pose from last week, Trikonasana, triangle pose. Again, lots of times in triangle pose, the ground feels very far away. 
So as you hold your triangle pose, I'm gonna show modifications. Say you have two blocks, I can place one block back, flat, one back block higher, right at the inside of my foot so that as I reach up and take my trikonasana, I have a nice high support for my triangle pose. This is gonna assist me with balance as well, okay? And from there, you can just play with how high you need the block assistance. I can go down a little further, then I can maybe go down to one block, one block a little lower, one block a little lower, no blocks, okay? Now, from here, I'm gonna go ahead, raise up, deep breath in, Exhale, warrior two. Inhale, warrior one. Exhale, let's step forward. Inhale, extended Tadasana. Exhale, traditional Tadasana. Beautiful work. I'm gonna adjust my blocks for my opposite side. Just since I know where we're going now, taking the time so that I can get the most out of my poses, I'm gonna go ahead, Step back, left leg, yeah. warrior one. Exhale, warrior two. Let's straighten those legs up, warrior one. Warrior two. Deepen, warrior one, or inhale up, sorry. Back to warrior two. Inhale up and lengthen. Warrior two, on this final time, let's inhale up, keep those legs straight, exhale, hands back to our starfish arms, extend and release down. Triangle pose. Good, again, adjusting or using those blocks however way feels best for your body. Beautiful. I'm going to slowly roll up, inhale, reach both hands high, exhale, warrior two, inhale, warrior one, facing forward, exhale, hands to heart center, stepping forward, inhale, extended Tadasana, this time let's add a forward fold, exhale, forward fold, all the way down, good work, inhale, flat back, Exhale, hands on the mat, step, walk, or hopping back. We're going to take our vinyasa flowing through, lowering down to the mat. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale to downward facing dog. Good work. Let's take a quick recovery pose and child's pose, sitting back on those heels, hands extended. Beautiful work. Let's slowly roll up on our heel. Okay. I want to make sure we include some shoulder opening um, exercises today. So I'm going to face you, but you're welcome to face the front of your mat if you're comfortable. We're going to extend both hands out. Okay. I'm going to turn my left palm down. It's going to go behind my back. I'm going to turn my right palm up. It's going to come over my head. And we're going to hold here. So from behind, you can see... This cow faced uh, pose arms. Good. Now I can't touch my hands here, so I want to show a modification for this. So if I unfold from where I am, whatever hand goes over the top, if you have a yoga strap or a towel, you're more than welcome to use it. Hands are out. I turn my hand that's going behind my back down. The palm that's up is now holding my strap nice and loose. I'm gonna fold that over and drop it right into my hand. So here I can get some beautiful work on both external and internal rotation using a strap as a prop to assist me if I don't have that full functioning range of motion or if I'm not comfortable reaching that, okay? Good, so we've been sitting on our heels this whole time. We're utilizing and learning how to use our props. Let's go ahead, as we release that hand position, let's come up onto our knees, deep breath in. 
Good. Hands coming through our heart center. We're going to reach all the way forward from our knees. Drop down. Inhale. Upward facing dog. To down dog. Good. We're going to do that one more time on our opposite side. From downward facing dog. Dropping to the knees. Child's pose. Slowly rolling up. I'm putting my strap in my opposite hand now. This time my right hand's going behind the back, left hand's going over the top and down, handing that strap to my other hand, holding here. Breathing through this stretch. Notice how I'm allowing myself to use a prop to prevent me from trying to reach those hands and around my back, arching forward. It's always wise to utilize the props and assistance to get proper alignment in a pose versus forcing a complete pose and allowing that body to bend in ways we don't want it to currently. So as I release from here, deep breath in, come up onto the knees. Exhale, hands come out in front from our kneeling high plank. We're gonna lower to the mat, push that ground away, upward facing dog to down dog. Good work. So we'll move into some more standing postures here. Let's go ahead and lift our left heel up to the sky. Three-legged dog, stepping that foot forward. Good. Raising up, warrior one. Exhaling, warrior two. From here, we've learned in previous videos, peaceful or, hum or peaceful or reverse warrior reaches back, left hand up, right hand down. And then we'll introduce officially extended side angle. This is the photo we're submitting, or the pose we're submitting a photo for this week. Extended side angle can have lots of variations. So one I'm gonna show you um, that is generally most accessible is bringing our left elbow to the left knee, reaching up with the right hand, eyes following that right hand, and then letting that right hand reach forward. Good. Now I'm going to come back, warrior two. Here are little details to make this pose a lot more effective, kind of in ways showing maybe common mistakes and how we can overcome them. So as we come forward to plant that knee, uh, elbow next to our knee, we want to really lengthen through that warrior two, the same way we did earlier where we deepened it and we dropped that hip down. We want to lengthen so that we have a nice, long, extended warrior two. Elbow not on the knee, but to the inside, okay? So that we go from having maybe a right hip that's up like this to having it create this beautiful kind of one single line through that body, okay? Coming up, warrior two. Reverse warrior extended side angle deepen lower and reach good warrior two reverse warrior back to warrior two making sure when we drop into our extended side angle also we keep that chest open a lot of times as people start to reach forward they do this they round and they collapse we want to instead open that heart center. So it's as if our chest is trying to point up to the sky as we reach forward. Good. Back to warrior two. To warrior one. Good. Let's bring hands to heart center. Lift that back heel. Let those hands come down. So we're in our runner stretch. Utilizing those abs and really lifting up through those hips to get a beautiful Step back into downward facing dog. Let's do the same thing opposite side. Okay, right heel's gonna lift. We're gonna step forward with that right knee, planting that right foot by the hands, lifting up, warrior one. Just for the camera angle sake, I'm gonna flip so you guys can still see this side of my body. Exhaling, warrior two. Inhale, reverse warrior. 
and then finding that extended side angle on this opposite side. All those same uh, instructions uh, apply here back to warrior two to reverse or peaceful warrior. Now, if you wanna use a prop here and try some different variations of extended side angle, let's come down, bring that right elbow to our right knee, extended side angle. But maybe we wanna reach now down with that right hand and up with this left hand. This is also extended side angle. It's a different type of variation. It's uh, completely recognized and acceptable. The reason I never start with this though as I come up is two things. For one, it allows the student to lean onto that hand. Where just like Trikonasana, we want to have that hand always be light on the mat. And if we're keeping it at the elbow, we're not having anything to lean on, so it forces that strength to be built in that leg. So if you choose to move on to separating those hands down and up, make sure that that hand is always light, whether you're using the block or the ground, and we're not like pushing into that ground to support our body weight. Because notice how the minute I do that, my hip kind of comes up. We wanna keep that hip low, hand light, chest and eyes up and open. Okay, so again, lots of variations to learn. Coming back to warrior two, back to warrior one. Hands coming to heart center, dropping down, runner stretch, stepping back to downward facing dog. Wonderful work, guys. Let's go ahead and recover back in our double knee to chest stretch, sitting back on our heels, hands out in front. Now we're gonna uh, take part in another simple upper body exercise as I come up onto my heels, facing the camera so you can see clearly. I'm gonna bring hands to cactus arms. We're gonna enter just our upper body into eagle pose. To do that, I'm gonna cross, acting like these are humerus bones here, we're gonna cross right over left. So I'm gonna put right elbow right across, creating an X. Then I'm gonna continue circling that right hand around my left hand with my forearms looking right in, or sitting right in front of my eyes. So if you look at me from the side, here is my eagle pose. For many of us, if our shoulders especially are tight, they don't allow this full crossing and wrapping. So for a lot of people, a modification for eagle arms is just touching the hands together, just crossing the elbows as best we can, maybe even holding here. We just wanna make sure we only modify in that way if we really realize our bodies can't reach the full pose. We always really wanna work to try for that wrap. Okay, I'm gonna do same thing opposite side. Eagle arms start with cactus arms, left goes over right, and then left goes around right. Holding here. Eyes looking straight through the forearms, even though we're not necessarily focusing on any one point. In yoga, we hold what we call our drishna, our gaze, and it looks always towards the horizon or above, unless there's any specific pose that intentionally asks us to look down. So here I'm looking towards the horizon in front of me until I'm ready to open back to my cactus arms. Hands coming back, deep breath in, sitting up on those knees, extended kneeling tadasana, Hands come down on our exhale, out in front. Let's lower from our knees into our upward facing dog and downward facing dog. Wonderful work, guys. So we're gonna combine all of those one final time. Deep breath in, right leg goes high. Three-legged dog, exhale, stepping it forward. Inhale, warrior one. 
Exhale, see how long and extended it is, warrior two. Inhale, reverse warrior. Exhale, extended side angle. Good. Now watch, I'm going to straighten those arms out, variation of extended side angle, straightening that front leg, entering triangle pose. Holding here. Good, slowly rising up with those legs straight. Beautiful breath in, arms up. Exhale, warrior two. Inhale, warrior one. Exhale, hands down the center. Runner stretch, kicking up nice and high. Three-legged dog. Feet coming together, downward facing dog. Dropping to those knees, sitting back on those heels, child's pose. Inhale, sitting up, cactus arms. Right over left, eagle arms. Exhaling into that stretch. Releasing those hands, inhale, reach up. Exhale, fold forward, reaching forward, dropping down. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Opposite side, left heel goes high. Inhale, exhale, step it forward. Lifting up, warrior one. Exhale, warrior two, nice long warrior two. Inhale, reverse warrior. Exhale, extended side angle pose. Inhale, separate those hands. Extended side angle, eyes look down, slowly straighten that front leg into Trikonasana, triangle pose. Slowly rise up, nice straight legs, beautiful inhale, hands go high. Exhale, bend that front knee, warrior two. Inhale, warrior one. Exhale, hands down on either side of the front foot, stepping back, three-legged dog. Inhale, downward facing dog. Exhale, into that pose. And then transitioning, child's pose, hands out in front. On our next inhale, slowly rise up. Cactus arms. We're going to go left over right. Beautiful inhale as we cross. Exhale into our eagle arms. Beautiful release. Inhale. Come up onto the knees. Hands extend into your kneeling tadasana exhale through our center hands out in front inhale as we release down to the mat exhaling into upward facing dog and then releasing to downward facing dog beautiful work guys eyes looking up step walk or hop to the front of our mat forward fold When you're ready, root to rise, hands extend upward. Beautiful, exhaling, hands to heart center. Taking our true Tadasana. Using this Tadasana as a kind of meditative pause. This is a way to prepare our body for our Shavasana as well. We can do it while we're standing, while we're seated. Over time, you'll learn meditation can occur really any place, anywhere, as long as you're mindful about how your body is feeling, how your body is breathing, how your mind is thinking. And then we'll use this stillness and this quiet to ease us into our transition 
of uh, finding ourselves in our Shavasana position. Using our Shavasana time to make sure our bodies are comfortable, our minds are relaxed. We're focused on the here and the now, not worrying about the future or the past. From the Shavasana, let's begin to move our fingers and our toes, our elbows and our knees. Maybe take a good morning stretch overhead. Enjoy that lengthening. When you feel ready, go ahead, begin to roll to either your right or left side so that you can push the open way from that ground to sit yourself up. It's a very safe way to exit. So depending on your um, level uh, of fitness, I always encourage doing that roll, especially as we exit Shavasana. Thank you so much everyone for being very flexible in terms of how this class is being delivered to you. It was planned as a Zoom, but we had to do it as a recording because of technical issues. As always, the light in me honors and sees the light that is in each of you. Thank you for joining me. Namaste.